In this video, we are going to talk about the Earth and the universe. So at the end of the lesson, you will be able to explain what is meant by diurnal motion, annual motion, and the precession of the equinox. Okay, so we have this thing called celestial sphere. When we look up at the night sky, we see stars and planets that seem to be attached to an imaginary spherical surface. So this imaginary sphere is known as the celestial sphere, with the Earth being located at its center. Now, celestial sphere is a very useful concept for understanding positions and motions of the star. So as you can see, the celestial sphere has poles, just like the Earth. So it also has an equator, just like the Earth. Let's start with the diurnal motion. This refers to the apparent daily revolution of the celestial sphere around celestial poles, which is caused by the Earth's rotation. Okay. So essentially, it describes the apparent movement of stars and other celestial bodies around the Earth. You have probably seen pictures of this on the internet. So if you have seen this, that is the diurnal motion. Now, the path that celestial bodies take to complete diurnal motion is called the diurnal circle. So when observing the night sky, you'll notice that the stars appear to move from east to west with respect to Polaris, right? Or the North Star. Also, the ones near the pole have smaller circles. Now, you should know that the time for one complete rotation is 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4.09 seconds. So this is what we call a one sidereal day. So that's it for diurnal motion. We also have what we call the annual motion. So based on the word annual, it's by year. Okay, This is the apparent yearly movement of the stars as observed from the Earth. This one is caused by the Earth's revolution. Again, diurnal caused by Earth's rotation, annual caused by Earth's revolution. So the sun revolves around the celestial sphere, with its path being called the ecliptic. As the Earth moves around the sun, the apparent position of the sun in the sky changes. This change results in the changes to the length of daytime and nighttime, as well as the changes to the sunrise and sunset points. So these changes are responsible for the different seasons we experience throughout the year, well, aside from climate change. Lastly, we have the precession of the equinoxes. Okay? To put it simply, it's a slow, gradual wobbling of the Earth's rotational axis. Just imagine um, spinning a top, and the top started to wobble. That's kind of what's happening to the Earth. So the precession of the equinoxes takes about 26,000 years to complete one full cycle. Now you have to remember that as the Earth wobbles, the position of the stars in the sky appears to shift over time. So this means that over the course of several thousand years, the constellations we see in the night sky will appear to move slightly. Okay. For example, let's take um, the constellation of Libra. Right now, it's located in a certain part of the sky. But in a few thousand years, it will have moved to a different part of the sky. Okay, this is why we say the equinoxes are precessing through the zodiac. So why does this happen? Well, it's basically due to the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun on the Earth's equatorial pulse. So over time, this gravitational pull causes the Earth's rotational axis to slowly shift. So the precession of the equinoxes might not seem like a big deal to us here on Earth, but it actually has some pretty significant effects on our planet. So the first one is that it can affect the timing of the seasons and length of the year. 
it can also have an impact on astrology, especially now that people are so fond of using zodiac signs, right? I'm a Libra, I'm this, I'm that. Um, you also have to remember that the rate of precession is not constant. It varies slightly depending on factors such as the gravitational pull of the planets and the shape of the Earth's core. Currently, the rate of precession is about 50.3 arc seconds per year, which means that it takes about 72 years for the equinoxes to shift by one degree along the ecliptic. Now, I want you to think, what other significance of precession of the equinoxes can you think of? Okay, so before we end this video, I want you to try and answer these 12 questions. Again, the answers will be posted in the description box.